It's time for the X and Y show. With your host, Mr. Roosevelt. He talks about man topics, lady topics, and relationships. He talks about love, sex, and infidelities. He even gives good tips. There is no other show that compares to the X and Y show. Oh yeah, sit back, take your clothes off, and relax. It's time for the X and Y show, where real relationship issues are talked about and addressed. The only place on the planet that tackles the topics that everyone wants to talk about, but no one is brave enough to address. Nothing escapes X and Y, baby. Now, here's your host, Roosevelt Colbert. <sighs> And greetings, 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 and greetings. <laughs> Welcome to another installment of the X and Y show. And it is Friday night, and you belong to me for a little over an hour. And I hope you uh already undressed. I hope you're naked with your girl uh, or your guy. You know, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, whatever it is, you two better be naked, sipping on some wine, and getting ready to be entertained by your host, Roosevelt. And you're listening to the X and Y Show, the only podcast that tells it like it is. So, welcome to another Friday. Um... I hope that, you know, it's been a, a long week. Seems like it's been forever since my last show. Um, you know, I really enjoyed doing these shows and entertaining you and, and talking to you. And hopefully I'm helping you. Hopefully you're taking something from my shows. Um, you know, there's, there's a little comedic twist to them. But, you know, I'm trying to relate to you on a, um, you know, a personal level. You know, I'm trying to... Uh, let you relax uh, more and um, listen to what I'm saying and taking it in and, you know, just helping you out in your everyday lives just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. I'll, I'm happy with that. So if it's helping you out just a little bit, that's good enough for me. Now, the XY show, of course, you know, is, uh, if you've been listening to me, um, it's available on a lot of uh uh, avenues that you can take advantage of. My main platform is Spreaker, of course, uh, where I'm coming from you um, to you right now. However, you can also reach, uh, get at me at Stitcher. I'm on Stitcher as well. I'm on iTunes, and I'm on TuneIn Radio as well. Um, and I'm just been uh, accepted on Google Play as well. So, you know, the X and Y show is striving and moving towards bigger and better things. And who knows, you might see me on XM Radio one day at the Howard Stern. <laughs> who knows, you know, you got to dream big. So uh, anyway, you can reach me at any of those venues. And um, also, you can follow me on my social network. Um, I'm on Tumblr. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. And I'm also on Instagram as well. Um, you can get at me and follow me on all of those on my website, www.thexyshow.com. That's www.thexyshow.com. You can see um, all of the icons for my social media and click on them and follow me and be aware of upcoming shows. You can also see that on my website, upcoming shows. You can also get the latest episode on my website as well. So it's up to you. I made uh, myself available um, to you as uh, much as I can, you know, to make it more convenient to you so you can make you uh, listen to me wherever you are. So hopefully uh, you're taking advantage of that. Um, with that being said, um, I guess we'll go ahead and hop in tonight's episode. Um, tonight's episode is hygiene is very important in a relationship 
or marriage. Hygiene is very important in a relationship or marriage. And I put it a question mark at the end of that because, you know, I was kind of like asking the question, is it important? Is hygiene important in a relationship or marriage? <laughs> I will say yes. <laughs> I will say hell yes. Um, you know, for me personally, um, currently I'm not married. Actually, I've never been married, but you know, when I'm currently, when I meet a woman out in the club, well, I don't club much. Uh, so that's a bad example. If I meet a woman out, um, in the coffee shop or I meet her out in the mall or whatever, the grocery store, whatever. And she looks pretty good. I mean, she looks damn good. I mean, she's like Beyonce, uh, Nia Long, or, uh, you know, um, you know, she good. She fine, you know. But let me tell you what ends it for me. I don't care how good a woman looks. If she, if she is not clean and she even not clean to a point where she smells, then that's it for me. That's it for me. She's disqualified. You know, it's like the, the Olympics, you know, when, when they jump, uh, I think they get one chance to jump. You know, before the whistle sound, if they do it again, they disqualify it. Well, that's that's with me. If I smell a woman, that's it. Her ass is disqualified, crossed off. It, it, it's over. There's no chance for her. Because for me to be able to smell someone, that translates to uncleanliness. I know some of you say, well, you know, that's not true because some days, you know, I'm just having a bad day and, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm just smelling that way, but I don't smell that way all the time. Well, yeah, that's bullshit because you should never have a bad day when it comes to smelling presentable or satisfactory, you know, and I'm not saying you should bathe in a bottle of cologne either or perfume. But, I mean, damn, there's all kind of remedies that you can get to address smelling or to avoid smelling on, you know, your body. So there's no excuse for that. So, I, I mean, I don't care what you say. You know, I, I, I'm having a bad day, and before I got home, I, I just wasn't able to, you know, do this, and, and I wasn't able to do this. That's bullshit. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Your ass is disqualified. There's no excuse for that. My daddy always taught me. He said, boy, a woman can call you ugly. She can call you uh, fat. She can call you stupid. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to. But don't. Never. <laughs> don't you ever let a woman say you smell. You know. Never. And I, you know, I say... And I've, I've, I've even heard, you know, my friends, uh, not, you know, some work associates, you know, how women run their damn mouth at the job and stuff. And they get back to you. And um, I heard uh, one time, a place I was working at, probably about 10 years ago, they was talking about all the men in the office. And I came up. And, then, you know, some of them, you know, you know I, mean, I wasn't in the top. I was like in the middle. You know, because, you know, some pretty boys there, punk-ass motherfucker. But anyway, that's another story. But uh, I was kind of in the middle, and, and I, I remember I had a, you know, an agent. You know, you always have somebody on the other team, like, infiltrated so they can come at you and tell you what the other side is saying. You know, that kind of thing. So us and the fellas, we had this girl. She was cool with us, you know. And she told us what everybody said about us, all the women said about us. And they said about me was, you know, JC, he cool. Uh, Rose, you know, he's cool. But, um, you know, I mean, he's, he's, all, he's all right. You know, I mean, um, you know, I, I could date him. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was, 
I, I was dateable, you know. And they said, you know, all the attributes of him. They said, oh, no, he got that hands down. He uh, he smells the best. Nobody's hands down. Roosevelt smells the best of the office. Uh, that's that's it. I mean, and nobody compare. You know, it was it was no comparison when it came to smell. Now I wasn't considered I wasn't considered a pretty boy, and I'm not a pretty boy, punk motherfuckers. But anyway, I wasn't considered a pretty boy. But when it came to that attribute of a male, you know, as far as smell and smelling good, no one compared to me in that office. That's what all of the women, or like fifty percent of them, you know, the single women. And some married. But all of them were like, no, you can't compare to him. He smells the best, hands down. You know, and, and some of them say they can date me, but, but you know, there's always some preference. You know, so, um, but my point is, I was known for smelling good. You know what I'm saying? And I took pride in that. And I still take pride in that, of smelling good. Because there's no reason why you can't smell good or clean there's no reason for that you know women are supposed to smell like roses or lavender coconut or, or vanilla cream sickle you know pleasing smells um, you know, you know, pleasing smells. You know, very pleasant smells. Your hair is supposed to, supposed to smell good. You know, and man, you supposed to smell good. You supposed to smell like wood, uh, or, or not wood, but uh, oak. Uh, you know, uh, you know, different woodsy smells. You know, nice colognes that are based on woods and stuff like that, or the oak smell, or you know. You're supposed to smell good. You're supposed to smell a masculine, nice smell. You're not supposed to smell like ass. But I can't speak for that because I'm not smelling men. So I can only speak on as far as relating to a woman. Um, when I smell a woman who smells like ass, that's just... It's just ridiculous to me, you know. And, and that's just besides being ridiculous, it's a little lazy, actually, and disgusting. Really, I mean, you don't have enough decency to wash your ass. You know, I mean, you you don't have enough decency to clean your body. And if you 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 have you're smelling. You know, if somebody smell you, that means you're not cleaning your body properly. That means you're not washing your hair properly. And there's no excuse for that. And a lot of you are saying, well, you know, I can't find a, a boyfriend. You know, a, a guy saying they can't find a girlfriend. And I'm not saying that's the sole reason, because it's not. That would be ridiculous. But for some of you, it is. Some of you are very attractive people. Very attractive. Look well. Look good. Dress well. You know. Uh, professional. I mean, you have everything going for you except you smell like the inside of a zebra's ass. That's the only thing wrong with you. Or your hair is smelly. For As far as women go. I think we be men too, but most of the time it's women who uh, have smelly hair. So you can have everything going for you to the point where you you know you're in a good point of your life. You're making good money. You look good. You're in shape. You know you dress well. You have a nice car. You know you have all the material uh, flashes. <laughs> You know, you have all the material stuff and you, and you physically, you look good, except you stink. So if the person's, whether you're a man, if it's a woman or you're a woman and it's a man, 
if they're like me, doesn't matter how much money you're making. Doesn't matter how in shape you are. Doesn't matter what kind of job you have. Doesn't matter where you live. If you smell like a total froze ass, that cancels out all of that for me. And people like me. And there's people like me where if they smell you. That's that's the end of it. There's no coming back from that. Because I look at it like this. If you're not washing your ass, then you're definitely not washing your your your, your sexual reproductive organs. You know, if you're a guy, you ain't washing your nuts. If you're a girl, you ain't washing your pussy. Simple as that. If you're not washing your ass, then you're not washing your, your sexual organs. I mean, if if I can smell you with clothes on, imagine how how you smell butt naked. You, 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 you see what I'm getting at? I don't want to smell that. Then y'all be talking about, you would eat me? <laughs> Shit. No. <laughs> if, if, you, if you get your ass in the shower first, maybe I'll do something. But there's no way that I can be intimate or in a relationship with someone who is not clean. There was no way that could happen. Because I'm clean. Fuck that. I'm clean. If a woman don't like anything about me, she can't say I smell. Or she be lying. That's important. That's the small things that anyone could correct. You know, a lot of times you you have a job and you're not you're not making the money that you like to be making. You know, that's that a it, it, you will one day, perhaps, but it's going to take time. You know, you got to work your, your, your way up, right? So you might not be in the shape that you want to be in right now. But, you know, you got to work out, go to the gym. and But that's going to take time, right? You got to, uh, you know, work out and prepare for, for that and get in better shape. If you want a bigger house, you got to save up, right? You got to get out of the apartment or whatever. And save up and buy that house, right? You want this kind of car, you got to prepare and, and plan and, and and get a better car, you know. But smelling good, all you got to do is hop your ass in the shower. Put on some cologne. Put on some smell good. Do something where you're not smelling externally to the world in a negative way. Should be in a positive way, not a negative way. That's simple. That's a simple fix. That's the most simple fix someone could do to fix themselves in regards to being in a relationship. That's the easy fix. That's the easy. That's one of the easiest fix you can do. Smell good. That's nothing. So there's no excuse when I smell a woman who smells like ass. There's no excuse for that. So when I smell that. And when that happens, that's automatic disqualification. I don't want to hear nothing about no bad day. I don't want to hear nothing about um, running around and, and uh, you know, I've been running around. I haven't had a chance to, to go home yet and take a shower. And I, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear nothing. You always should be on point when it comes to that. There's no excuse. You know, one time I remember... I used to stay in a place. Well, first, before I tell that story, I'm going to ask for the people who are listening. How many showers or baths do you take in a day? You know, think about it. I mean, how many showers or baths do you take in a day? And I know how many I take, and I'll tell you in a minute. But I want you to think about that question because I know a lot of you out there. Well, I mean, <laughs> but you know, I, I remember one time I was living in a place called uh, a place of Alaska called Bethel, Bethel, Alaska. And for you who, for those of you who know, Bethel is um, 
it's in the what they call the bush. So it's not like Anchorage. It's not like Juno. It's not like Fairbanks, where it's a um, like a modern city. You know, they get, uh, for example, for water, you have to. Um, well, for not all of the places in Bethel, but most of the places, you have to get it delivered. And what they do, they deliver it in a a tank. So depending on your size of the tank, you know, obviously depends on the frequency of your deliveries. So my tank was uh, 300 gallons, which that lasted me for one week, barely. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, 300 gallons, that's a lot of water. But it's really not because for that tank, you had to, that's the same water you had to wash the dishes with um, for your sewage, um, for taking a shower and, you know, bath and so forth. And if you wanted to wash your truck or whatever, all of that had to come from that 300 gallon tank. Now, that's just me. I had 300 gallons. There was houses in Bethel that had much bigger uh, than that, you know. But for me, it was, you know, it was just me. So I just had a 300 gallon tank. But what I'm trying to say is 300 gallons doesn't go that far, um, especially, you know, if you're like me, who's very clean. And I was taking at that time, two showers a day. I was taking one in the morning and I was taking one before I go to, to bed. So with that, um, you know, and sewage and washing dishes and blah, blah, blah. I, you know, I was getting delivered. I was getting water delivered weekly. And I was barely, barely making it. I mean, when he came for the next delivery, I was like at the bottom of that tank. And I remember this guy who I used to work with, he asked me how big my tank was. And um, I said, 300 gallons. He said, well, how freaking do you get deliveries? I said, every week and I barely make it. And he said, you know, man, what are you doing? Uh, if I had a 300-gallon tank, it would last me three weeks. And I thought about it. I say, you know, I'm barely making it, and I'm taking two showers a day. And he's saying that 300 gallons will last him three weeks. And I believed him. You know why I believed him? Because he smelled like the middle of a rutabaga's ass. He smelled like shit. He didn't bathe his ass. So yeah, a tank would last him three weeks. Because he didn't bathe his ass. So that's what I'm saying. You know, it was no excuse for someone who smelled. And, you know, and for that area, a lot of people sacrifice washing their ass because you know obviously water was like a like gold and shit you know i mean you don't you don't waste water basin <laughs> it was like you take a two shower but what's wrong with you you know and I was, I was looked at it like the out, like an outcast and shit you know you take a two shower what was wrong with him you think he all yeah, I'm so I'm you know I'm I'm using that example like even in a place like Bethel where I was getting my water delivered, I still did my responsibilities. I still washed my ass because there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for being dirty and smelly and shit. There's no excuse. I mean, we live in in modern times. You know, we're not cavemen, you know, we ain't savages. And even worse for a woman smelling like shit, it's worse for them. Because a woman's always supposed to smell good. For them. You know, a guy you might give a pass to. And you know, I'm just saying that because I'm a guy, because I'm not trying to give it a guy. But women probably think, I'm sure some women think the opposite. They smell a guy. They automatically disqualify him. I'm sure there's some women out there, and I understand that. 
And it's their right to do so. Because there's really no excuse for anyone, especially an adult. You know, if he's not homeless or she's not homeless, there's no excuse for them smelling like shit. No excuse. I remember another story. I used to live with this guy. He's a roommate. And, uh... And he was, uh, you know, he used to work in a plant. And I'm like, you know, I used to see him come home and he didn't bathe his ass. And so I'm thinking to myself, one day I just asked him shit because, you know, I'm like, do you take a shower before you go to sleep? He was like, no. He, he said, no. <laughs> you know? He said, like, you know, am I crazy? Why would I even ask him that? Hell no, nah, he don't take no shower before he go to sleep. That's why would he? That, like, that's unnecessary, you know. And I think to myself, you mean to tell me you get up working a plant? You know, people come, you know, a lot of you think because you sit in the office. There's a lot of you out there that take one shower a day. You don't bathe your stinking ass before you get in the bed at night. And a lot of you. Your, your your logic behind it is because, well, you sit at a desk all day and, there's, you know, you're not really sweating. There's no reason for you to be able to take a shower. Well, it is. Because even though you're not sweating, you're still getting dirty. Now, you're not getting as dirty as someone who's like a mechanic. No. But you're still getting dirty. You know, people coming to you and talking to you and their particles getting on you, you know, their spit getting on you and, and you know, their bodily molecules passing to you. I mean, you have interaction. That, that's, that's science. So, you know, you dealing with all these people, you're touching things, you're touching doors, you know, you're touching chairs, you're touching desks, you know, you're touching bathroom doors and, stalls whatever the case may be and I don't, i'm not even addressing the people that wash that don't wash their hands at work and after they take a shit and piss you know uh, i'm not even addressing that but i'm saying all of these things that you're being exposed to at work and you gonna hop your ass in the bed at night and in your bed and go to sleep i don't know how anybody could do that I I couldn't, and I and I used to ask him, and not just him. I had this girl that I knew, and that's why I couldn't mess with her no more. After I found out she did that, you know, I asked. Her, I said, "You don't take baths at night? You, you don't? Oh no, no. There's no reason for that. That's a waste. No. <laughs> like, like what?" Okay, you know, so I slowly but steadily moved away from her because she was nasty. That's nasty. A grown woman hopping her ass in the bed at night and not washing her ass before she go to sleep. That's that's nasty. And I'm not going to deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. That's my preference. That's my preference. But it's a lot of folks' preference. Because that's just a sign of uncleanliness. I don't care what you say. A lot of people say, no, 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 I'm trying to conserve the water. The water, we have to conserve the earth. You know? No, that's bullshit. Man, wash your ass. There's no excuse for that. You can even take a Navy shower. Shit. And for your, those of you who don't know what a Navy shower is, you know, Navy shower is basically you turn the water on, get wet, and suds suds all up turn the water off scrub and then you turn the water on rinse you know you don't just leave the water running when you're taking a shower so you know even that's acceptable but the the key is get your ass in that shower get your ass in that bathtub wash your nuts wash your pussy Nobody want to smell you. And if somebody is smelling you, perhaps that's the reason why you're not in a relationship. 
Because you known for smelling like a yak. Let me tell you something. Adults. If you're an adult. You should take at least. Two showers a day. Three if it's. If you can. Shit. If it's hot. You know, human, and you know, you're off that day, whatever. You know how you're feeling. You know, maybe not every day, but sometimes you can, you, you should sneak in three. Shit. It can't hurt. Put it like that. But at least two. One before you go to work, one before you go to bed. Now, sometimes when you get, when you get home, you might sneak in one. You know, get a little fresh, you know. Then before you go to bed, take another. You know, it's, you know, it don't have to be every time, but sometimes you might want to sneak in that third one, depending on how hot it was that day. But at least two. An adult should take at least two showers or baths a day. Period. Period. And, you know, wash your hair. Fellas. And ladies, wash your hair. And I know a lot of women, I knew this girl who didn't wash her hair. I knew she, for a fact, she used to work out every day. And she didn't wash her hair. And I asked her, shit, I, I asked her, I said, you don't wash your hair every day? You know? She said, oh, no. I mean, I said, why? She said, um, well, if I washed it, it would wash my perm out. You know, so I don't wash my hair every day. You know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, what the hell? And ladies, if you can't wash your hair because you got a perm or a stop, then you, you need to leave that shit out of your head. You need to go natural. You know, you need to, you know, do whatever you got to do. Get rid of that shit. Do a little simple style. You know, wear natural, wear fro, whatever you got to do, you know. If you can't wash your hair because of a perm, what kind of shit is that? And yes, I've had women where I smell not only their ass, but I smell their hair. Now, how in the hell am I going to get with a woman like that? I'm smelling her ass. I'm smelling her hair. So if she take her drawers off, all hell going to break loose. So I don't even want to smell... I don't even want to take that chance. I don't even want to take that chance. Now, these are nice women. They were nice, they were professional, uh, you know, educated. They had everything going for them. But the hygiene, they failed. The simple thing like hygiene, you think, you know, they, they've got all these degrees and got everything going for them. But a simple thing like hygiene they get an F in. They fail. And it's no excuse for that. Guys, the same thing. I know some guys out there, some women, he's very handsome. He has everything going for him. He's in shape and blah, 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 and blah, blah. But he stinks. I can't do it. I can't handle it. And you wonder, you know, for you, those of you, and you, and, you know, it's funny. The people that smell like ass, they know it. Most of them do. Some of them don't, but most of them do, and they just don't give a damn, which is even worse. But they know they smell like ass. So for those of you out there who listen to me and know you smell like a total frog's ass. Maybe that's the reason why you can't find a girlfriend. Maybe that's the reason why you can't find a boyfriend. If a person think you're unclean, that alone is grounds for disqualifying you from uh, potentially being in a dating relationship and furthering on to marriage later. You won't even get the first base. You won't even get a chance to play. You won't even get a chance to put on your uniform for something like that. Bad hygiene. 
Somebody like me, I don't want you getting your stinking ass in my uniform and getting it. You know, I, I I don't give you the chance. If I if I smell you, that's it. You cut. You you off the team. Get out of here. There's no coming back from that. Because if you smelling like I said before, you smelling enough where I can smell your outer body. And I damn sure don't want to smell you when you're naked. Guys, you too. Ladies don't want to smell your nuts when you take your shorts off. Wash your ass. Ladies, wash your pussy. It's not hard. A cloth rag, a mesh rag, whatever you do, clean yourself. Clean yourself. Anyway, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to come back with some remedies of if you actually want to help yourself tackle this problem, you know, and, and, and start to smell satisfactory. I'm not saying you got to smell like the most expensive colognes. Some of you are allergic to cologne. You don't have to wear cologne. You don't have to wear cologne. There's other ways to remedy you from smelling to everybody. There's other ways to address this. You don't have to wear cologne. So when I come, I'm going to take a little break. When I come back, I'm going to try to help you out with some remedies that you can do to help yourself. And also... Some remedies, if you know someone that could use this help, you can maybe take some of my advice and take back to them and help them. And you help them smelling better. And then perhaps, you know, their chances of getting in a relationship is better. Because they don't smell like shit anymore. Anyway. I want to take a little short break, and I will be back in about four and a half. You're listening to the X and Y Show. I'm your host, Roosevelt. See you in four and a half.
Welcome back to the X and Y Show. Hope you're enjoying tonight's episode. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Google, Instagram, and Tumblr. Well, all right. Back to our real cute teddy bear of a host, Roosevelt. And welcome back to the X and Y Show, and I'm your host, Roosevelt. Tonight's episode, before I went on break, we're talking about hygiene. Is it very important in a relationship or marriage? And my answer to you was, yes, it is. Um, everyone should be clean if they're in a relationship or marriage. You know, um, just because you're in a marriage, you shouldn't be lazy or get lazy and stop being clean. Stop taking baths. You know, if you're trying to be in a relationship, maybe... That's the reason why you're not in a relationship because you're not washing your ass. So yes, hygiene is very important. And if it's not important to you, it should be. It should be. There's no excuse for being unclean. No excuse. So before I went on the break, I told you that I was gonna give you some remedies that if you know that you stink, you can maybe take this advice and it can maybe help you um, improve your chances of being in a relationship. Or if you know someone that, you know, has it going, has things going for themselves, uh, has uh, you know, everything going for themselves, have a good job, educated, um, have all of the bells and whistles, except that they're, unclean then maybe you can kind of use this to um, help them out and you know a lot of not directly you know you don't go up to them and say you stink um, but you know those indirect ways that could help out as well so my first remedy to someone who smells number one beige your ass if you're an adult, like I said before, you should be bathing at least twice a day. If you're somewhere where it's hot, like Miami, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, <laughs> you know, ATL, all of that shit, you might need to squeeze three in every once in a while. But if you're an adult, you should be in like Alabama too. I can't get Alabama shit. But if you're an adult, you should be taking at least two showers or baths a day. At least. And I'm talking about male or female. So that's the first remedy. Beige your ass. That's simple. That's simple. Number two. Wear cologne or perfume. Now me personally... You know, cologne to me is like an art, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have good colognes, you know, that's, that's just me though. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, like I told you before, I take pride in smelling good and you might not like anything else about me, but you, <laughs> you gonna like how I smell. So I, that's my thing though. I wear cologne. Um, I think women could wear perfume. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, I'm allergic. I'm allergic to perfume. I'm allergic to a cologne. And, okay, fine. If you're allergic to perfume or cologne, then wear some lotion. There's all kind of lotions um, out there like Bath and Body Works, fellas. You can go, they have all kind of lotions that you can get that's, that smell good, but that's not heavy in perfume or that's natural based where it's, it's, it has fragrance, but it's a natural. Um, so it's not, you know, it won't affect your allergies and so forth. And ladies, the same thing. You have Bath and Body Works, you have Victoria's Secret. You know, they have all kind of lotions and stuff that you can get. So you don't have to get cologne or perfume. You can get some lotion. And put on your ass. You, I mean, there's all kind of flavors: raspberry, uh, peach, 
vanilla. I mean, there's all kind of flavors. So you can get lotion. Now, some of you are very sensitive when lotions bother you. Okay. I would say then there are spiritual sprays available as well. Now, spiritual sprays are sprays with very little fragrance. They're mostly water, basically, uh, for people who are allergic to heavy fragrant materials and um, substances. They're like a spritzer. That's what it is. It's, it's like very light and fragrant. Very, it's like 20% fragrance, you know, and 80% water, basically. So you're getting a little fragrant, but most of it's water. So they have that available. That's better than nothing. That's better than nothing. You know, and I'm not saying that you have to put something that smells good on you either. I'm not saying that you have to wear cologne. I'm not saying that you have to wear perfume. I'm not saying that you have to put on lotion. I'm not even saying that you have to wear the spritzer. These are all things that helps. It's better. It's better if you put this stuff on. You smell good. But what I'm really saying, the most important, that's why it was number one, bathe your ass. I mean, all the other stuff is, is like an addition, you know, that stuff like a bonus. Cologne and perfume and lotions and spiritual. That's like a bonus. But the most essential thing that you need to do is bathe your ass. So I'm not trying to get away from the point you know, saying that you should go out and buy all of these sprays and lotions and cologne and blah, blah, blah. That's a bonus. The number one remedy is basing your ass. So don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of that. Now, as I said, adults should bathe at least twice a, week, a day. Three times, depending on where you live, how hot it is. Another remedy, you can wear cologne or perfume. If you're allergic to cologne or perfume, there's lotions out there that you can get. Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret for ladies, or men too. Um, <clears throat> you know, other various shops that have different types of lotions that you can put on, put on you as well. If lotions bother you, some people are very sensitive, they can't wear lotions. Well, there's spray spritzers, where basically there's little fragrance, but mostly water. Again, though, I'm not saying that you have to use this stuff It's a bonus. The chief thing is for you to bathe your ass. These are bonuses, though, that you can use to help you smell good. And as a last resort, if you can't use any of those, then, you know, get, you know, rub some mint or orange peel on your ass. <laughs> you know, get, rub, get something. Because there's no excuse for smelling. There's no excuse for that. And that's very important in a relationship. And marriage. You know, I know a lot of married couples out there saying, well, damn, he, he was clean before we got married. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know how to tell him. I don't know. I don't know how to talk to him. Well, you better talk to him because if you don't talk to him, then he think everything is fine. Same thing the other way around. She she bathed when we before we got married. She was clean. She was the cleanest woman I knew. Now she barely bathes. I don't know how to tell her that she stinks. Well, you better find a way. Or well, she going to think nothing is wrong. Simple thing like communication can go a long way. Hygiene is very important in a marriage, in a relationship, and especially a marriage. That's somewhere a relationship you can always cut off you know i mean you know hey i think we should go out different ways it's just not working out but blah, blah 
But in marriage, you kind of, well, you're supposed to be there for the long haul. So, you know, you should address these things before you get in a marriage. If you're in a relationship with somebody with a stinking ass, you have to address it before you say, I do. Now, me personally, it won't even get to the relationship stage because I told you before, if I smell you, that's it. You're disqualified. There's no coming back from that. But some guys, that's not a disqualifying trait. So they'll still give you a chance. You know, they, you know, they're more, they're more lenient in that area than I am. But that's still something that you should definitely address before you say I do. So it's very important in a relationship and even more so in a marriage. Now, another thing I think that hair should be washed daily. Now, I know a lot of you women say, oh, no, is he crazy? Oh, my God, no, 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 I'm not washing my hair. Well, that's probably why you don't have a boyfriend. Because a lot of you get so used to your hair smelling like chimpanzee ass to you can't smell it. You can't smell that your hair stinks because you haven't washed it. That's, 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 that's the only reason you haven't washed your hair. Some of you will not wash your hair because like, like I said before, you, you have a perm. And you don't want to wash the perm out. Or you have weave. You know, I talked about that last week. Or the week before last week. One of the shows. You have weave or clip-ons. All that fake hair in your head. And you don't want to wash it. Because you don't want to mess it up. So your hair, sm- your hair stinks. Your head stinks. That's why. If you have that shit in your head. Take it out. Go natural. Stop getting perms. Get, go natural. Wash your hair every day. Fellas, wash your head every day. And I'm talking about all your hair. I'm talking about the hair down by your nuts. Wash your hair. Ladies, I'm talking about hair down by your pussy. Wash your hair. And I'm not saying shave your hair, ladies. I'm not saying that. A lot of think you know... That someone, when they say, you know, be clean down there, that you're talking about shave. No, no, no. Hell no. I'm not saying that. And that's that's totally different. That's a grooming characteristic. Anyway, that's not cleanliness. That's grooming. And me personally, I like a hairy pussy. So I would never tell a woman to shave her pussy anyway. So, But that's another show. But I'm not saying that you should have no hair to be clean. Just wash it. Wash your hair down there. Wash your hair on your head daily. That's all. That's simple. And if you can't wash your hair due to um, weave and um, process hair and all that shit and uh, a perm, then you need to stop doing that. You need to stop pulling that shit in your head. Go natural. So you can be clean. Go natural. So you can be clean. Now. Now that is. You know. That's. 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 Remedies that I think that anybody can follow. Number one. Beige ass. Number two. uh, Improvement. To uh, augment that. Um, you know, wear cologne, wear perfume. You know, if you're allergic to cologne and perfume, get some fragrant lotion, some, some lotion with fragrance in it. Perfume lotion, cologne lotion. You know, it has fragrance in it, but it's not as thick as cologne or perfume. If you're allergic to that, get spritzer spray with little fragrance, mostly water. And if all fails, then rub some mint or orange peel on your ass. But the key is, stay clean. Wash your head. 
stay clean. There's no excuse for being smelly. Now, I know a lot of you saying that, you know, I'm in a relationship already, but there's this person at work that I think would be a good person in a relationship, but, you know, because they smell, I think that's hindering them from being in a relationship. Well, I'm going to tell you some ways that you can help them. This is one good way. And, you know, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, right? You don't want to embarrass anyone because some people actually don't mean any harm. They just, they just don't know no better. Some of them know better. They just don't give a fuck. But that, that's another case. But here are some ways that you can help that person that you think is nice, but you think their hygiene practices are hindering them from finding a relationship. One way, if you have a secret Santa in your office, you know, around Christmas time, you all draw for Christmas and, you know, give gifts, but no one knows who gave them the gift. And the person that stinks, you know, who you know, whoever you with, or you know, work with or whatever, and you get them, right? Then give them a box of deodorant. I, I know this, and I'm not talking about a box. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, two or three. I'm talking about a box, like a case. You know, like, I think they come in cases of, uh, what they, well, I guess it depends on what company it is, but they come in cases of 12 or 24, you know, a case. Give them a case of deodorant. And I, I think, you know, yeah, that's direct. Um, and it might be a tad embarrassing, but it's not, it's tactful, you know. You're basically saying that they smell like ass, but it's like subtle, you know. So they, they might take it like, oh, yeah, oh, oh I have a deodorant for a long time. That's great. So it, it, you're telling them, but it's like you're n not being mean about it. And plus, they don't know who you are anyway. So that would be a good way, in my opinion. Get them a case of deodorant. You know, go to the store, buy, tell um, whoever you go to the store that you want to uh, get a case. And you probably get it cheaper, you know, buy it at, uh, like that or buy it wholesale or go to one of those outlets or something like that. And just buy a case and give it to them. So that's one way, you know, that you can help someone. Another way, give them a gift certificate to Bath and Body Works or Victoria's Secret if it's a woman. Um, for fragrance only. So it'll be a gift certificate they can go in. They can't buy negligees and all that shit. And Bath and Body Works, they can't buy, you know, anything they can <laughs> They can't buy anything but fragrance substances or fragrant product products. That's the only thing they can get. <laughs> you know, they can't buy anything but that fragrance only. So get them a gift certificate where they, they, you know, they can go buy themselves something that smells good. And another another way that you can give them uh, get them a gift. Uh, natural uh, ingredient. If they're allergic to lotions and cologne and stuff, then give them natural ingredients. You know, buy them a mint leaf. You know, or mint leaves. Or mint tree. <laughs> and explain to them how, you know, to use or utilize that tree in certain ways that, you know, mint is, is beneficial to the human body and make sure that you really emphasize on body odor. So, you know, that's ways that you can kind of help someone who you know is a nice person, but you think that them being unclean or being perceived as unclean because people smell them is hindering them from being in a relationship. Those are some ways that you can help them 
achieve being in a relationship. Now, they still don't cooperate. Well, there's really nothing you can do about that, is it? There's really nothing you can do about a person who just insists on being unclean. You know, a person that insists on smelling unclean. There's really nothing you can do about it. They're grown. You know, you can't hold them down. Unfortunately, but you can't hold them down and force them to uh, wear cologne or perfume or lotion or spritz, whatever the case may be. You can't. So if they choose not to do it, that's just something you have to live with. But it's not something that you have to be around. You know, I'm one time uh, there's this guy. He was a cool guy. And we were friends, but, you know, I just got tired of smelling him. This was like uh, 15 years ago in one of my first jobs. And I just got tired of smelling him, you know. So I, I, I kind of started to avoid him, you know. We didn't go out to lunch as much. Uh, we didn't hang out as much and blah, blah, blah. And he asked me one day, he said, hey, man, um, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. He said, are you avoiding me, you know? So, you know, me, I didn't want to, but I had to because I, I didn't want to lie to him. I wanted to be straight up with him, right? So I say, <clears throat> it's not that I'm avoiding you. Okay, I say, I asked him, can I, can I be real with you? I mean, you know, we cool, right? Can I be real? He said, yeah, I mean, this one. I told him, I'm not avoiding you. I'm avoiding your, your smell. He said, what? I said, I said, I'm, I'm not avoiding you. I'm avoiding your smell, man. You you smell like shit. You, you're a grown man, man. I mean, come on, you. I mean, and I, I didn't tell him, you know, I didn't tell him like that, but I told him in a way that he understood why I was staying away from him. I just couldn't take it no more. I mean, he was very, <laughs> very bad, you know. And I told him, I said, man, you know, you. You smell. I just, I just can't take it. I, I think you're a cool guy, but it's just your hygiene is a little lacking. And, you know, in that case, I'm not saying every scenario is the same, but in that case, it helped him realize that, wow, if Roosevelt, if he's saying that, what is everybody else saying? You know, this is my friend. And he's saying that. So what is what is the talk around the office? Which the talk around the office was pretty bad because he was known for smelling. But he thought about it. He said, man, if you're saying this, what is everybody else thinking? So he made the change. He did. He improved. You know, I don't know what he did, but he started coming to work. I'm not saying that he came to work bathed in the cologne, but he definitely smelled better. So it helped that I was honest with him. If I wasn't honest with him, he would have kept on going the same old way. Smelling like a damn orangutan. But I was honest with him. And some people can take honesty. He was one of those people that could take it. And he approved upon it. So, like I said, it depends on your scenario. Some people you can't be outwardly blunt like that. And it hurt their feelings and then they become defensive. Uh, then, you know, you lose a friend over hygiene. You know, does that make, do that make any sense? Anyway. So I'm going to take a little break and I'm going to come back and I'm going to wrap this episode up tonight. And, um, you know, before I, I just want to emphasize I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy all these expensive colognes and fragrances and lotions. And some of you are allergic to that stuff anyway. And some of you just don't want to buy spritzers. Some of you just don't like it, right? Everybody's different. So some of you just don't like that stuff anyway. You're not allergic to it. You just don't like it. That's cool. But what I'm saying is, there's no reason for you to stop 
being clean. There's no reason for you to stop bathing your ass. If you do anything, you can bathe your ass. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I'm going to take a little break. And when I come back, I'm going to wrap up tonight's episode and um, get ready for um, a new month starting next week. And I uh, hope you guys uh, be back to join me for that. But um, in the meantime, you're listening to the XY Show. I'm your host, Roosevelt, and I will be back in about four and a half. <laughs> 